Welcome everybody to Food and Laughter. It's your boy Lavetti Vegas, Terrence G. George Zilla. We are Three Comic Mafia. This is Food and Laughter. Today's food is from Al Bashash. I think I'm saying that wrong, but hey, we still trying to do the damn thing. And we got fries and a veggie wrap. Now, we usually got meat on the show, but because of today's guest, she a vegetarian. Hey, the only time she eat meat is when she's in these roast battles because she won four of them. Four times, four time winner to the left of me is our guest tonight, Brianna Kelhorn. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Four times. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. So, as the guest, you get to dig in first. Yeah, always. You if you want, you don't have to, but. Yeah, and you could probably eat our thing. veggie wraps because we might not eat them. But no, you I'm going to eat one. Okay. Gonna, I'll probably eat yeah, mine. So, I'm trying to get healthy, but. Here we go. That's not like you. Right. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Coming on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. thought about our health today. Thanks. Just, just a little bit. So, so you just won another roast battle. This is the fourth roast battle you don't want, man. How you yeah. feeling? How you? Um, we, we got you in the roast battle, and actually, let's do that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, what got you in the roast battle, and do you think it helps you stand up doing these roast battles? Um, I think it is a really fun writing exercise to just kind of have to because you do have to come up with some new material specifically for that show. Um, it is just kind of a fun activity for that reason. The first time I ever did it was actually this little roast battle thing in Lincoln. It was this weird charity show that was going on all day long, and the roast battle was at the very end of the night. So it was at, it was at midnight. Oh, wow. So there was almost no one left there. Um, and it was like a tournament type thing like most roast battles are. And, I, I was the runner-up that time, oh, wow. and yeah, I just kind of kept doing it. And um, um, the Omaha scene hadn't really seen me do roast battles yet, um, but I knew I already had that reference that I knew I could do this. It was like the secret weapon. Yeah. Mm. So when I heard that other people were um, in Omaha putting together a roast battle, I was like, "Get me in on that." They yeah. didn't come to me. I was like, "I." Trust me, I can do this. And I, I gotta, I gotta ask you, because you, you, know, <laughs> you look like such a sweet young lady, <laughs> and you, we all know roast battles is brutal. Like, were you like that? Is it like, did you talk a lot of trash, or did you roast people when you was in school, or coming up, or is it just something that you just jumped into? Because, I mean, that's not an easy thing to do. But, I mean, but some people have had the knack for it, but. Was you just a natural roaster, or did you did you tear people butt up when you were in school? Like, not really. Yeah. I'm um, I mean, I I am kind of an angry person, but I'm not really? super upfront about it all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess maybe it's kind of some pent up aggression. But uh, I really do think a lot of people don't quite understand what roast writing roast jokes is about because a lot of people will just go for the most obvious mean thing possible and they kind of just forget that they have to write a joke yeah yeah is what a lot of people will do yeah. like with me personally i've seen a lot of people like will see that their opponent is like a woman so they'll be like you're promiscuous you're ugly you're crazy like, you're not writing about that person. You're just saying mean things that you would say that you think would hurt a woman's feelings. Right. When that's really not the point of it. The point at the end of the day is still to make the audience laugh. You're not just trying to hurt someone's feelings. And that doesn't mean I don't go hard. I mean, I've roast battled Terrence here yeah, yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he we, got we, brutal. Yeah, yeah. We, we have, it was fun. We had one of your victims on, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I didn't even know that. Did you, well, it was great. Did you recover? You are? Yeah, I'm yeah. good. No, it was it was great, though. Like, because that's the thing is, is you kind of hit the nail on the head with when people do a lot of that surface stuff. That's what mm -hmm. I appreciated about you when we battled, because we didn't really know each other well, and mm -hmm. still, even though neither of us really knew well, we kind of still went after the material that was put that was a little bit more intimate. Maybe it wasn't the greatest because we didn't have like, you know, years worth of knowing each other as comics mm -hmm. and years worth of seeing each other at open mics and shows, but it was still taking risks and jabs. Yeah. It wasn't predictable. So mm -hmm. with that, do you think, kind of piggybacking on George's question, how do you think that helps you with stand up as opposed to the roasts? I think with the roast battles, I think at least in the way that I write roast boat jokes, I think of either um, not spending too much time on exposition, so either getting information across very quickly 
or relying on what the audience can already see and kind of perceive. And a lot of people interpret that to only mean physical appearance, but you gotta take into account things like mannerisms and things like mm -hmm. that too. Like um, there is a one person I was kind of like doing, that, that was kind of in a roast tournament with me and he was like, he was getting like um, by a lot because people were going in a direction that like may have worked if they were just shown a picture of this guy, but taking into account his full like the way he talks and his mannerism stuff, it just wasn't hitting. Yeah. You know, and I don't want like name drop or anything. No, totally. yeah. I wish you would. Yeah. But that's okay. We'll yeah. talk about it later. Yeah, we'll talk. Yeah. We'll talk <laughs> you don't have to, but you don't got to. But you know, we want to know. We want to know, but you tell, <laughs> tell us when the cameras ain't on. Though. Yeah. It's all good. No, no, don't worry about. It. We just playing with you. But let me ask you this: How long have you been doing comedy? It will be two years and like the end of August. Wow, you making making a name out here like that? That that always astonished me, and this lets me know that. Uh, like I said, I've been doing it for a long time, but when I see people that's doing it, like these guys here, my, my comedy brothers, only been in the game for two or three years, but the progression, you can see that when people take uh, this craft so seriously and mm -hmm. uh, apply it and, and progress in it, it always amazes me, but also it, it also lets me know that uh, your worth ethic, you know what I'm saying, it lets me know that you take it seriously and you're out to progress and grow as you as you go along so commend I commend you for the two years that you're doing because your name is out here I heard of you I know who you are I just won't battle you <laughs> 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 we, we won't be doing no rose battles hey, yo. Cause Terrence was still you know he called me later hey, man. <laughs> no, but so that's the thing so so you also joke about uh, being labeled as autistic when you're not but you lean into that do you think that that affects you at all in your comedy, one way or another? Do you think it's negative or do you think it's positive? I um, I do think it's like a kind of a positive thing because it kind of just gives me kind of that experience and also just kind of gives me something to latch on to and talk about myself in. Mm -hmm. And really, there's a, there's kind of been a lot of confusion here about like whether I am or not autistic. The the real answer is like kind of borderline. Um, and are we all though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're comics. Oh yeah, for sure. But I, I I kind of fall into a weird area where it's kind of like I exhibit a lot of autistic symptoms, but um, actual autistic people have like this pattern recognition that allows them to mask a little better that I don't. So sometimes I feel like I almost come off as more autistic by being less autistic. <laughs> I, I, I swear, if he hadn't said it, I, I would have never known. No, but, it's, but because speaking of one of those things, it's it's kind of uh, one of those things that people go after in the roast battles. Like, oh, I yeah, noticed for it's sure. one of those things that they're just off the jump. Mm -hmm. They always go after it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of equate it to uh, Eminem in the eight mile sort of thing. Like you've mm -hmm. heard it. Okay, you got it. You, you're going to call me you know, leave it to Cleaver and all of this, got it, now I'm going to cut you with this, and mm -hmm. you do a very good job of that. Yeah. Wow. You think, um, as a woman comic, you think women get overlooked in the comedy scene? I definitely feel like, to an extent, that can happen, um, partially due to the comics and partially due to the um, audiences and bookers we're working mm -hmm. with here out in the Midwest. I do feel a little of a hurdle when I... Um, Depending on the venue, especially, just sometimes I get up and it's kind of feels as if, okay, the first thing I have to do is convince the audience that I'm a person, you know? <laughs> right. And that's always kind of a weird hurdle to get over. What's the, um, what's, what you think is the, the um, hardest hurdle to get over to get booked? Like, what do you, how do you sell yourself to a booker? Or does, do bookers just come to you? Honestly, I've been mostly relying on people coming to me, but I, so far in my kind of comedy career, if you could call it that, but I, I, re I really have acknowledged I need to reach out a little more and probably get in contact with more people, you know, looking to travel a little bit, do that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I guess my answer is I haven't, but I should. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you from Omaha or, or Lincoln or where are you from? I'm originally from Omaha, but I currently live in Lincoln. Okay. So you would link it kind of the same, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, how do, so we know that it's a smaller scene out there, but how do you like it out that way? 
I do like it a, a lot. It is it has kind of died down a little bit recently, mm -hmm. but I think we're going to get a resurgence pretty soon. I definitely know several people have things in the works, so I'd definitely keep an eye out for things going on out sure. there. Um, and uh, I like the Lincoln scene for the most part. I definitely, some of my closest friends in the scene are out in Lincoln. Yeah, it's small, but I've had a great time every time I've been out that way. It's a fun, fun time. Storm Cellar, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Rosie's was, I had a blast at Rosie's out that way. Rosie's was a good one. Yeah, really good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a um, you got speaking of out of town event, you got an out of town event coming up. What is this in April? It's for charity. Um, oh yeah, I'm doing the. Uh, it's called a uh, I think stand up night for a cause. Yeah. In yeah. Ames, Iowa. Yeah. Okay, nice. So tell us about that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I just saw someone had posted in the Omaha comedy scene like you can send in little audition tapes to this website and we'll consider you for a spot on this thing. And I was like, hey, this is free. I usually pay $20 to get my feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and get no correspondence ever again. They just oh, take yeah. your $20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I sent in some footage. And um, to my surprise, they actually gave me one of the two headlining spots. Like Super it's dope. it's like ten people on the lineup and like everyone gets ten and like two people get twenty and I was one of those two. That's Super awesome. Dope. That's, that's super dope because they rejected me. But um anyway, <laughs> two times, two years in a row. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's dope, another dope, leg dope. up. That, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 that she she killed it though for real though. That's dope though, especially a headline the spot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my feelings is hurt a little bit, but uh, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I'm gonna just keep working. Um, staying local. Uh. <laughs> So, so let's <laughs> let's lean into um, my question. We'll kind of go back into your your discussion about the women. That's something I'm always curious about because mm -hmm. I always want to expand my audience, and I never want to be offensive, you know, mm -hmm. intentionally or not, right? Oh yeah. Um, what's something that that you would say male comics or promoters, bookers in general, could do for female comics? That is a tough question. Um, like, how can we be better advocates for female comics? Dang, that sounds like a question for Serenity. <laughs> Get her back on here. She's working on that PhD. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. She's yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, I love Serenity to death. She's one of my best friends in the cool scene. Cool people, yeah. Man, yeah. I can tell that y'all friends, because y'all also got that cool vibe. Like, yeah. so cool. And, and then just so knowledgeable. I like I like talking to people that got some knowledge to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is veg out for the food, yeah. But you got any tips for us? Is there anything we can do, look out for? Hmm. I know it's a loaded question. So, yeah, I think I think you I think you just you know, sort of jab 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 jab. So, you know what I mean? You <laughs> can't let her duck a little bit. Yeah, like, don't think you day on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear you, T. Well, I mean, if you don't got an answer, that's cool too. I mean, because yeah. I know you you knew in the scene too and everything mm -hmm. like that, so that's probably a pressure question to really. Yeah, well, if we get you in yeah. a spot to where you feel like you got to upset, you know, anything like that. Oh, no, the yeah. the only thing I could really think of is just book more women because I honestly I do realize that there can be difficulty with that sometimes because we don't have that many women in the yeah. scene. But I feel like it's something that kind of builds on itself because I have had people that told me that they got into comedy after seeing me do it because yeah. they weren't seeing many women, especially younger women, getting right. into this. So You're <laughs> I, uh, I, so I do think that kind of just like builds on itself. Like the more women that you have visible mm -hmm. in doing stuff, the more other women will be like, "Hey, I can do that," and will start doing comedy themselves. So, yeah. I think that's cool because we need, you know, we need more women out here because I think women are funny. And I think if you're funny, you're funny. But we do need more women on the mm -hmm. scene, you know what I'm saying? We balance it out, you know? Yeah. Um, so keep doing what you're doing mm -hmm. and, and keep um, keep it being inspirational to these other young ladies out here, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So kudos to you for doing that. What's your short term goal, goal when it comes to comedy? Oh God, I'm terrible at planning. <laughs> 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 but honestly, right now I'm just trying to get booked for as many gigs as possible. Yeah. I I really want to start doing more stuff out of town, and yeah, that's really oh. The one thing I really want to start doing is more like private gigs type things, like mm. I. I 
that that's cool. <laughs> I told you about what happened. That's why I started laughing. Gig, that's why I started laughing. Oh man, I didn't mean it. Because I did a private gig just not too long ago. I'm sorry, but it ain't about me though. Like, I know what he's. I'm sorry, man. Sorry if I talk a little too much. No, no, you're supposed to. That's two guests we've had that said that it's like y'all got to understand this is about you. We want you to talk. I'll just I'll throw it out there. So I had a private gig. And I was performing in a living room, and it was just—it was so—it was so awkward, and it was in Bennington. That's, and, but that's the thing she should know about some yeah. of the private so, gigs. So like, I'll, get yeah. ones oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, it's so like, it's, it's, I've been to ones in somebody's basement, and there's yeah. eight people, and it's literally a fundraiser from the neighborhood for that individual. So yeah, mine's all was kinds just, of things. Mine's was just like a, this is our clown for the night type yep. thing. I don't know. They had chicken in the oven, and they had drinks, and. Maybe not that private. Yeah, they had. <laughs> I was performing, and the dog was like right there staring at me while I was performing. So it was like 15 guests and a dog, and, yeah, and but it was like, man, for, you know, as comics, man, we 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 do anything for a gig. But that's when I learned not every opportunity is a good opportunity because it was just so awkward. And you know, I said a joke, and hey, husband. Ready? Do you want a gig in the back of this van? Yeah. I look freaking. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I did get, it's funny you said it, I had a gig or did get offered a gig because this dude used to drive around and, with his pickup truck and you will get up on the back of his pickup truck and perform, but he was driving around with a truck. Oh, wow. Yes, and he was coming to Omaha and Lincoln and he wanted people to perform. He was looking for people to perform on the back of his truck with a microphone and a speaker. That is how you get I, taken to a secondary location. <laughs> yeah, and I turned it down. <laughs> well, well, while we're talking about that, you know, and this, this is probably a little bit for everybody. So what's the weirdest show you ever did? I'm, I'm going to say mine first. I was at a strip club, <laughs> and that did not go well. <laughs> I, um, I didn't perform, but I attended one in the basement of a strip club before. One of my friends was booked on it. Was it here in Omaha? Yeah. Was it American Dream? I think so. I was just there last weekend for my <laughs> birthday. <laughs> George, you're there every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, Make your rain, baby. No. Okay. <laughs> but the weirdest thing I've ever done is probably this, honestly, I think mixed arts showcases are always kind of pretty weird. Like the ones where it's like music and dancing. Oh, it could get crazy for sure. Oh yeah, because like the last time I did one of those, well not the last time, the first time I did one of those, I was like sandwiched in between a rapper and like um, a uh, drag queen. <laughs> I can just imagine how that was, man. There's a lot of different vibes all in one spot. That is, oh, a, yeah. that is a different type of... And I it, got one of those. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to yeah. do. And it was definitely an interesting experience, but it's just very different vibes from what I'm doing because mm -hmm. they were very, um, you know, like, I guess they had, like, charisma and they were doing their music and, like, stuff that was actually, like, getting the attention of this crowd. Mm -hmm. And I would get up there and talk and they would treat it like an intermission. <laughs> well, you have like a little bit of a deadpan delivery mm -hmm. too, which bodes into your style and everything, but it's a huge clash from, you know, get up, let's feel the, you know, hey, I want you to be a part of this vibe and it's a higher vibe. Oh man, that's why it's never fun to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. So what's the what's the first city you wanna, you wanna perform in outside of Nebraska, outside of mm -hmm. Iowa. I, I consider Iowa out of town too, but mm -hmm. you know, some yeah. people are like, come on, really? Basically backyard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what, what city? What, across a bridge, you like, yeah. <laughs> what city is like your dream city? But I mean, even if it's the obvious, like LA, and New York, you can say those, but what's your dream city you want to perform? In? I never want to go to LA. I had she to pass like through Thank you. LA <laughs> Thank you. once on my way to San Diego, and it was the worst experience I have ever had. So you're not me, moving anytime yeah. soon. No, not me not your dream. Me and my friends, we spent three hours in LA, and the entire time was just driving through LA. <laughs> Anyway, sorry um, about that. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, sorry I brought up bad memories. I didn't, okay. I didn't know LA was that bad. I'm so sorry. I won't bring a Lake of Jersey in here. Right? I definitely agree. I've never been to LA. I just, I just never had. I don't know. I just didn't want that. I mean, I'm old school. I just didn't want the, 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 the limelight and all that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, I just wanted to just tell jokes. It didn't matter if it was in the smaller stage or. Yeah. I don't mind a big stage, but LA, I just wasn't ready for that you know, light camera action type stuff. Cause it seems like you're, you're always in a, I don't want to be on TMZ. Yeah, you're <laughs> always busy. LA is always busy. I mean, yeah. when I went, I went about a year and a half ago and um, there was a, like when you go to Venice Beach, mm -hmm. then they got all sorts of stuff down on Venice Beach. 
But as a comic, you know, I'm looking at everything. I hear somebody mm -hmm. throw a microphone, some girl telling jokes, mm -hmm. didn't care. But she had like a circle of people around her, you know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. you know, even if, if people were in Vegas too. Yeah, the even people wasn't problem. listening, the attempt, I, I, I got I to gotta appreciate the attempt of somebody trying to do that because on stage it's hard, but just think about people walking past. Mm -hmm. I think that's it being harder and, got you me. know, just to keep going. I can barely keep going on stage, so I don't know if I could do... You know what I mean? Somebody walking past, but LA is definitely pretty busy. Mm -hmm. But what city though? You didn't, you didn't say what's good. Uh, I think I'd really like to get out to Denver at some oh, point. That, oh, that's doable. That is a good scene. That's, that's, that's I've a, been, that's a I did scene. Colorado Springs, but Denver, this ain't but two hours away. Yeah, but that you know, is a good scene. We know Ali out there, Ali yeah, Kareem yeah, out there. He good. always puts on, he always puts on, um, he got Kareem in your face yeah, out there now. So I'm mad. You hit him up. You, you, that's, if you want to go to Denver and that's your goal, Ali Kareem, like he'll put you it's, on. It's one of those growing shout out scenes to Ali. too. For, yeah, shout out to Ali, man. Everything's going because you got everybody that's moving, doing all that thing. Mm -hmm. It's like Austin and Denver are two really big popping yeah. ones. Yeah, Denver's really, Denver's really good. John Corelli, I know him. He books out there. He's pretty cool. Sarah June over in Colorado Springs. I know some Colorado connects, but Denver, yeah, John Corelli and Ali Kareem, man, they they book mm -hmm. out in Denver. And they both cool, cool people. So. I'm not saying you're gonna get like you know hundreds of dollars to go out there, but you know we starving artists. That's a cool road trip too. Yeah. It's, oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not driving though. I ain't one eight hours. The best trip. We, we, it's a dope trip. I know you ain't talking. We just did three hours, buddy. Hold on, hold on. We just did three hours. We're buddy. not talking about me, right? Okay, we ain't. We ain't. We ain't. We ain't. We're, we're not. You know. uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I could do eight hours. You you can. Like you sure? Okay, okay. I drop it. I drop it. My bad. So um, with with all the traveling stuff, Bree, you got? Do you have plans in the works now? Do you have shows booked? Or are you working on submitting tape? Like, I am definitely working on going to Denver sometime in June. Perfect. Yeah. So how many festivals have you entered? You said, because I know we were talking about it, you said the, that was the free one, so you tried that. So how many festivals have you actually tried to enter? You like, just to throw it out there. I mean, you ain't trying to embarrass you with that. If you don't want oh, to no, name no. it, you don't want to say that. I have submitted to one, and I immediately got discouraged when they didn't take me. I, I, I feel that, man. Because those, because a, a lot of times, a lot of people think those is like scams, or they friendly, you know, mm -hmm. it's a friend thing. It's, yeah. it's literally a friend thing when um people people do that type of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, there's one, I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna name drop, that's funny, cause usually I would. But there's a festival, I already know, and when I see it, it ain't nothing but them and their friends. And it's like, man, are y'all really looking at other people that's putting it on, or is this the second, third year in a row you got the same comics, you know what I mean? And festivals are really hard to really enter and be like, man, I got a shot at this. You know what I mean? I've tried it. From the outside, yeah. Yeah, yeah, from the outside. And I'm not not knocking no festivals or anything like that. I just know it's like, man, thirty dollars. I got a kid. They have a home. reputation. 30? I mean, yeah. whether whether people like it or not, they have a reputation. But yeah. we got to get to the, some of the beef, though. The 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 beef. All right. Okay. Who do you want to punch in the face from the scene? Right now, it would charge you zero money. If you just. This is the fun part of the show. You don't have to answer. You don't have to. But if you tell us, I'm happy about that, too. You got to answer. His name's not worth um, saying that. <laughs> we already know what you're talking about. He doesn't yes. even deserve the class. I'm Perfect. not afraid of him. He's just, he's got his little show in Lincoln, and that's all he's ever going to have. But it's the, mm. I think we all know a certain little um, guy with a fake New York accent. Yeah. What? Fake guy with fake New York what? accent. Oh yeah, man, you gotta name really drop that. that. I definitely <laughs> wanna know. Can we get some hey, attention? Can we get something? Can we get a, 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 honestly, 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 honestly that, I, I, I will applaud it because it's the juiciest we've gotten at this point. Yeah, so I'm very impressed. I mean, you. To be honest though, that's that's just probably as far as it usually gets because you don't really want to mess up the business. Stop. So you, you don't, but she ain't trying to get this business. I did. Yeah, this but question. I didn't expect to get this. Nah, nah. I'll tell you guys after the show. He's okay. not worth okay. the drop. I, yeah, okay. we don't so, want to so give we, somebody. We don't so, want to give bad people publicity. So we, we talk about. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's cool. We we, well, we got. I think we got like two minutes. So 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 what? What we talking about beef? Because that's that's how we. Got to know each other. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought oh, you, yeah. I thought you was gonna bring up that person. That's what's even more funny. And then that person asked me to mentor him, which is even more weird. Yeah. But I, are you cool with that person now? Are you and that person cool? Or you just stay away from that person. I just stay away from that person. See, I thought y'all was cool because from what they told me, they said y'all, you know, y'all was cool or whatever. So I guess she still refers to other comics as her enemies. 
Man, I should be worried. Oh. I, I, you, 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 told, you, you already told me like, hey, this is how this is this is. Know it is. You know, but this is how me and me and Brianna actually met because she seen something and she was like, hey, I need to tell you something. And I'm like, okay. So I thought, you know, okay. And then she told me, but I thought that was squashed according to that person. And again, I never told that person that stuff. Um, just to let you know, yeah. but I thought. Y'all squashed it or whatever. I even, but like I said, I was like, you got any, anybody you don't like? And, but she's like, no, I'm friends with, and then she dropped her name as a friend. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, just saying, this is the beefiest beef I've had. <laughs> That's why I keep the question. But no, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. We're going to leave the beef alone because you, you got a clean <laughs> reputation. You're a hard hitter. You do these hard roles. Hard worker. Battles. Yes, hard very funny. Respectable. Yes. Very funny. Inspirational. Inspir- inspirational. So I hope I hope you didn't get annoyed by the questions we asked you. Oh no, you're fine. I'm fired. scared you're about to start roasting us. For, for you want to tell everybody where you found out socials real quick? Yeah, what you got you going on real your quick. Socials, everything. Um, I'm on a uh, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, that kind of stuff. Under what name? Uh, oh, Brianna yeah. Calhorn. It's, well, you know, some people got different. Oh yeah, names, and, I know. <laughs> Calhorn's with a K, by the way. I got you. Okay, I got you. Okay, well, this has been a great episode. We want to thank our guest, Brianna Kilhorn. Let's give it up for her one more time. We want to give it up for the food, El Basha. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. It, it, it's good. I took a couple bites. Um, we're not vegetarians, but we do got a vegetarian guest. I want to ask you why you were vegetarian, but hey, we ran out of time. It's so good. It's so great. This has been another episode of Food and Laughter. Y'all have a great night. Man, absolutely.